the AS5600. Um, I did a video about this last year, and this is just a follow-up. This is a little breakout board module. I have it set to analog mode, and I have this little magnet right here on the end of this screw. And um, if I put it next to this and rotate it up, you can see in the background, let me actually get it on there. There we go. It rises and falls based on the twisting of the magnet. So instead of that, I'm going to try to use the I squared C protocol to communicate with this chip and get digital data um, out of the 12 bit ADC that it has. So the I squared C protocol is a serial protocol that uses the SCL and SDA pins of the AS5600 chip. The benefit of using I squared C is that you only need to use two wires to get digital access via a serial transfer. The SCL pin is the clock pin and the SDA pin is the data pin. The way it's able to do this is by clocking in serially put out data between the master device uh, or the independent device and a slave device or the dependent device. In this case, we're going to bit bang this and uh, do it by hand. And so um, I will be the master device with two buttons and um, the slave device will be the AS5600 module. Every controller or master device uh, can work with uh, up to 128 slave devices. And um, each slave device has its own unique address, which is a seven bit address. There's a bit that follows the address, which is a read or write bit. Read is one and write is zero. Prior to beginning communication, a start condition has to be met where the data line is drawn low while the clock line is high. The unique address of the AS5600 is uh, corresponds to a hex value of 0x36, which is 0110110. After the slave device is addressed, um, it pulls the line low and allows the master device to acknowledge that it's receiving the data. At this point, the next step is to enter a unique address on the slave device. In this case, it's 0x0c, which is the high byte of the angle sensor on the AS5600. Once that's done, you have to acknowledge the uh, data sent, whereas the data line is pulled low by the AS5600, and you have to send the clock bit. And then after that, um, you have to do a repeat start and then you readdress the AS5600, but this time instead of uh, writing to it, uh, the last bit the, uh, is set to one, which is the read bit. And then after that, um, after eight clock pulses, um, you get data from the high byte. Then it automatically, uh, the address automatically switches to the low byte which is the lower eight bits, since this is 12 bits total. And then after that, um, you have to pull the data line low yourself and clock that in to acknowledge it. And that's how we're gonna do the bit banging. But first, since I have to work on the breadboard with buttons for the bit banging, I'm gonna build a little interface. There's the magnet on a fidget spinner screw I'm laying the magnet right on top of the chip in the AS5600 module, and it spins nicely. And I glued, I'm gonna glue that down over it, and I put a coaster on the end of that screw so we can use it as an easy spinner. And there's the connections on the bottom of the board. Today we're gonna bit bang 
an I squared C interface for the AS5600. So the clock line and data line, they're held high using transistor based inverters. So the clock line and data line. And so start condition is now let's clock in the address which is um, 36 in the hex which is now I've clocked it in and the line is being pulled down by this um, by the actual chip and so you have to acknowledge it with a clock pulse. Done. Now we write in the address. Now it's being held down again. Okay. Repeat start. Now acknowledge it. Now we have data every eight clock cycles. This is going to be serial data. And then to acknowledge what the slave is sending the master, you have to hold it down and clock a down cycle in. And do it again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. stop condition. Now it's completely, no matter how many times I press the clock, nothing's come communicating with the chip. Now it works. Here's the same process on an oscilloscope. There's a start condition, then the address of the AS5600, then an acknowledge, and then the address of the angle sensor followed by another acknowledge bit, and then a repeat start. And after the repeat start, you re-enter the address of the AS5600, but adding a one instead of a zero at the end of it, followed by an acknowledge. Once that's done, every eight clock bits clocks in a byte. And um, then you have to manually acknowledge this by driving the manu the um, data line low and hitting the clock and you just continue this process so here's the high byte followed by the low byte and every time you enter eight clock ticks followed by an acknowledge you get the high byte followed by the low byte and um, you just have to encompass the entire um, acknowledge low bit um, with a single clock pulse. And at the end of it, you do a stop. One more time with manipulation Start of the again. angles. Start condition, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, 
zero, zero, right, acknowledge, data, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, acknowledge, repeat start, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, and right, acknowledge. Now here's the data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, acknowledge, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. Let's change the angle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. I'm going to change the angle to a high one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's still reading the low one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. Now in the next one, it should read this new high angle. So here's the high bite. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge, top four bits are high. Here's the low bite. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Acknowledge. It should be the same. It's consistent. And then to stop it, five, six, seven, eight, acknowledge, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, instead of putting pulling the data line low, I'm gonna no acknowledge, so clock in that. And that's no acknowledge. And then I'm gonna pull the data line low, this line high, that's the stop condition. Now, if I do anything, no, no data comes out, because I stopped it. Done. So here's a screenshot of some examples of data from the high byte and the low byte. Notice the last four bits of the low byte or the high byte are the only thing supplied for a total of 12 bits. Here's a zero angle signal and here's a very high angle near the top level. While this was fun and mostly educational for me um, in terms of learning how to use an I squared C and hacking it, um, it's always easier to use a microcontroller to use I squared C. To do this in hardware uh, would be tedious and require a lot of uh, chips and counters and timers and clocks uh, to try to duplicate the sequence. If you're using an Arduino as your microcontroller, there's I uh, squared C pins of SCL and SDA, and you just use the wire library, and you could see an example of the code uh, to get the high byte and low byte of the angle sensor. On a Raspberry Pi, it's even easier. Uh, use the SM bus library and there's and the Raspberry Pi's specialized pins of uh, for I squared C. But more fun, uh, once you understand the entire protocol, you can make your own library if you wanted to. I, on the other hand, am going to continue doing this using analog. Um, so while this was fun and educational, I hope you guys appreciate it. Um, thank you for watching. So I've connected up the AS5600 wires, which is basically the red wire here is um, VCC. Uh, the white wire is the GPO pin that goes to VCC, uh, five volts. Um, green is the ground wire and the yellow is the analog output. So since I have this on five volts, um, it should give me a reading between zero and five volts. So let's test it out. 
Let's turn this on. All right, we have 4.37 volts. Now it's going to zero. Now, uh, let me make it 500 milliseconds. And that's the voltage. So stay tuned for my next video where I implement this in my digital sampler project um, as a DJ scratching interface in a very analog way. So thanks for watching.